Hi, I'm Paul Seal from Codeshare.co.uk. Welcome to this, the 15th episode in this series where I show you how to build a website in Umbraco 10. In this episode, we're going to look at what view components are. So this will be one of the first times we're actually looking at some C-sharp code in .NET 6 as well. So um, we're going to look at that and just have a get a feel for what view components are and how we can use them in this project. So let's get started. So I've got Visual Studio open. I've got my command line running, .NET Watch Run, in my site folder. So you can see clean.site folder. Um, I'm running the site, and this is the site now. So one one of the things about view components is that it's it's not part of the page request. There's no model binding, and what I mean by that is that if there were some um, query strings on the page, it could automatically bind to those as for the model passed in. That's what we might find normally. Uh, but with a view component, yeah, it's not part of the request. It's not part of a controller or anything. It's just a standalone component that you can call. Um, the, there are some documentation about view components in .NET 6, so I will leave that in the video for you. Uh, but we're going to use this uh, to create our own view component. And what I'd like to do is create one for the navigation, and if we have time, one for the footer. So when I was doing those before, I did mention about view components, but we didn't want to get into it. Well, now it's time to get into it. So view components, what are they then? Well, Microsoft says they are similar to partial views, but they're much more powerful. They don't use model binding. They depend on data passed when calling the view component. And this article was, used, was written using controllers and views, but components work with razor pages. And what we've been doing a lot lately with Umbraco feels a lot like razor pages as well, because we've not really done much with controllers. So that's why they're quite suitable. Um, so I've got Visual Studio Code open. I'm just going to close all these tabs. And let's have a look at our master. So in the master is where we've been calling these partials. We've got one for the metadata. We've got one for the navigation and we've got one for the footer. Now with a partial, <clears throat> the routing for a partial is under views and then partials and then whatever folder you want really. So that's how we've been doing it so far. Um, but what I want to do this time is create some view components. And there's different rules for a view component. So to create a view component, it's got two parts. It's got the C sharp class part of it, and then it's got the corresponding um, razor file as well. <coughs> So we can see this um, over here. So this is our class. And there are three ways to create one. Um, and I don't want this video just to be me going through the uh, documentation. But basically, you can, you can create one by inheriting from view component. Let me just look for this. Yeah, it can be created any of the following. So deriving from view component, so that is using it as as um, when we create a class and we say it inherits from this. Or we can decorate the class with a view component attribute. Um, or we can create a class where the name ends with the suffix view component. So that's interesting that it's got these three conventions. So what I like to do when I create mine, I'll show you my preferred way of doing it. So these can be in any folder in the site as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create mine in, in a folder called components. So I'm just going to click on this file here so I'm able to create a folder at the root and call it components. But as it says, it can be any uh, file, uh, any folder name. Then in this, I am going to create myself a file. So, and I'm going to call this navigation. Now, if I wanted to, I could just call it navigation view component. And that now, because it's named that and the class, I'll call it that within the code as well. Then it will automatically become one. But I sort of like do belt and braces. 
navigation view component dot cs so we've got that now we can do public oh well, let's do a namespace namespace so we're in clean dot site dot components if you're using visual studio you get these things automatically now one thing i've done here which might seem strange if you're used to working with um C sharp from .NET Framework or earlier versions of .NET 5 and below. Um, I'm, I've ended my namespace line there. This is called a file scope namespace. And that allows us to, instead of the old way, where we would have this and then we would in, indent it and have our class. So this would be navigation, uh, public class, navigation, view component. Um, instead of doing that, what I've done is I've taken away these brackets so I can pull back the indentation to another level. And I think it looks a lot neater. So we've got our navigation view component. But what I like to do on this is I like to inherit from view component. Now, if I control dot on that, it, it says, oh, yeah, using Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC. So it recognizes that. I also, um, when I work with it as well, I also put an attribute above it and just do uh, view component, open brackets, name equals. I don't know why. I just, uh, it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, basically, it picks up this as the name. So whatever's in front of view component becomes the name. Um, I could even, I think because I've inherited from view component and because I've got that, I've got like three different things that you don't need all of them, but it will still work. But if I wanted to, I could just take off uh, that and leave that as navigation. I could leave that and now it will still work. But I'm going to do them all. I'm going to call this navigation. So view component name equals navigation, public class navigation view component, uh, and then in there it's from view component. And then if we just go down to here, the example one that we get in the documentation from a bracket, uh, not from a bracket, from Microsoft. The here we go. So. Um, it's this what I'm looking for here. So we need a method in here called iView component result uh, task iView component result invoke async. So here, oops, I don't know why that's deleted that. So with a basic um, view component the minimum we want to do is this. So you can pass, what you see here is you can pass variables in. So if we just do control dot make methods synchronous, um, we don't have to. Right, we'll save that. So we are working with the, a view component called navigation. And this is, it's got all three of different ways that you can define it as a view component, uh, but you don't have to do all this. Now, this will then return a view and the review that it wants is one called default now what i want to do before i create that view i want to just get the site to pick up on this and complain about this so yes i want to restart the app and i want the site to um complain that it can't find this view so i'm going to add it to the master instead of calling the um Instead of calling the partial view like it was doing on the master template, I'm going, I'm going to get it to call it from there. So instead of this, I'm going to do await component dot invoke async, and then um, we'll just check the official Microsoft documents as well. Component dot invoke. There we are. So then the name of the view component and then any parameters you want to pass in. So this is correct. So I'll just do navigation. 
like that. Now it is complaining because it doesn't know about that. Oh, it's okay now. So I've told it I want it to render the navigation uh, component here. There is another way you can do it as well. You can do uh, you can call this. It doesn't have to be async. It can be synchronous. So you can take the async off, and then you can um, to take this off from being a task and just call it invoke. So it doesn't have to be asynchronous. Um, so now I've called that. Let's just save that and see what happens on the front end of the site. See if it falls over or anything like that. There we go. So what is it saying? The view components navigation default was not found. So what it's telling us is that it's looking in the views folder and it's looking for the components navigation default. So let's go down to here and let's do that. So we're going to create a components folder at this level inside the views. And then we're going to create another file under that new file. And then we'll call this default.cshtml. And then um, this, we can just put anything. So I'm just going to put h1. Hello. So it's not particularly got a model to be passed to it or anything. But for now, that's what we're going to use. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. So it doesn't recognize it. Uh, might need to do .NET Watch Run. So I'm going to cancel that and run it again. So hopefully we won't see an error. We'll just make sure we've got the correct spelling for the file. So default is correctly spelt components. Oh, and it's just in the uh, in the components folder. So that is going to error and we'll see why. It's still saying it can't find it. It's looking for components navigation default. So let's put this inside another folder. So create a folder inside components and call it navigation. Then move this into that folder. Are you sure you want to move it? Yes, I do. Now we should be able to reload the page and it should know about it. So we're going to see a big hello up there. So instead of the navigation menu now, we've got hello. So that's how we do it with that. So let's see if we can change the name of it. So we could do, we could copy this and we could paste it in there i'm going to rename this and i'm going to call this goodbye i don't don't ask me why um and then inside this i'm going to say goodbye save that so for now let's just reload the page and see what happens so the default one is hello how do we get it to say uh, the goodbye one well, we can go into the view component and we can tell it what the name of the uh, view component is. So of the view to use. So we can say uh, goodbye. And I think we might need to tell it. the So, yeah, the string of the view name and then the model. So we can just say null for the model. That might it might complain about that. We might need to do like this view name. Oops. And I might just take off that like that. Let's just see how that is. So I specified this is the view name rather than it being the model. This is actually the view name. So we'll reload the page and there we go. We've loaded the goodbye one. So I know what some people do is they prefer to instead of having all of their partial views called default all the time it's quite hard to understand what what it is so in this instance instead of it being called default they'd call it navigation as well so it'd be in the nav components navigation and then navigation uh, but what i'm showing you here is that you can you can do the different ways so yeah if we wanted to you could call it like that and then you could go to your default rename that 
to be navigation and then save your view component and then if we wait for it to load yeah it's showing the navigation one so we could do that but i'm just going to leave it as default so that means that i can delete that and it means that i can delete the goodbye file don't need it anymore for bye and then rename navigation to be default.cshtml well that's good then so what do we get out of this like what are we gaining to me it looks like more plumbing well yeah it could be uh, seen as more plumbing but you get the chance to use what we call dependency injection in this so it's good to keep the logic out of the views and it's good not to need a controller um, for this as well so it, it you can just basically call it from your view here we're just calling it here so no controller was in, in was needed and you can basically pass in a model at this point so i could do um bob equals 10 like that and then in my component up here i can have a int bob and then my in my review i'll return bob and then in my default i will do at model int like that and then i will do at model now let's have a look so i'm i think i've done it right i might be wrong here no the model item passed into the view data dictionary is of type home page oh okay let me have a look at the documentation i've obviously done something wrong it's not how i always do it i'm just making it up for the example here so i think that's where i've gone wrong in just making something up for the example so i've got model i innumerable blah 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 and then model there so that's right so in invoke async navigation uh, let's see how they're invoking it so it says oh, here we go component invoke async so it should be correct so what i want to do is i want to just do another rebuild so i'm going to do control c i'm just going to run the dotnet watch run again it could be that it just needed to rebuild after that because in theory what i do have here is correct i've told it my model is an int i've told it to return my view and pass in the model of bob and so hopefully this won't error now there we go it's returned bob so bob uh, parameter is 10. so it's quite handy that you can pass these values in so if you imagine you might have values that you can pull from um umbraco so we could do at model dot and then on the home page have we got any properties um we we do have properties like level that's an int i'll just save that and then re reload this you know it's passing in a value from the model so you can see that and they can pass that into your component um but what we do want to pass in really is whatever the because if we just get back on topic and remember what the whole point of this is in the partials we've got a navigation and that navigation was um looking at the current page and then getting the home page well we can take this logic out of here and this as well and then basically our view can just care about the navigation items and it doesn't need to know about the home page or anything like that 
The navigation items is an I enumerable of a navigation item. So what I'm saying here is that we could do I enumerable navigation item. There we go. And then we'll just do control dot. No code actions available. So it doesn't recognize what a navigation item is. So we might need a using on this at using clean dot site dot. Wow. Where's our models? I've not done this for a while, so I've forgotten where we kept our models. So if I go to app settings development. No, if I go to app settings, models builder, source code manual. There's no particular namespace. Uh, did we put it in the view imports file? View imports. Oh, it's there. It's that one I need. Oh, I innumerable. <laughs> So yeah, let's just have a look. Because it's already in the view imports, I shouldn't need that. I enumerable. I enumerable of navigation item. Save that. Right, now it's a bit happier. Okay. <laughs> um then we want to go back to our partial view here. And instead of this home page and then blah blah blah, we're gonna copy these. We're gonna put this code in here. The model that we pass in is going to be the page. So that would be I publish content. Like that. This will do control dot and get the namespace for it. Um, we don't need Umbraco thingy anymore. We can just change that for content because that's going to be what's passed in. Home page, we can just make sure that we've got the published models defined. And then now we have some navigation items. And that is saying that it could be null. So if it's null, what we should really do is like this, and then we do innumerable or innumerable <laughs> dot empty. And then we'll just do I publish content. There we go. Uh, oh no, it should be navigation items. Yeah. There we are. And then return into the view navigation items. So then the last thing what we want to do is on the master in here, instead of model.level, we just pass in model so that whatever page we're on, it will be a I publish content. And then from there, we'll be able to get the home page. We'll be able to get the navigation items and then return it back to the view. And then in here, we'll take this. We will cut all of that out. So we'll copy it, whatever. We don't, we really don't need this. I'm going to just delete all the contents of that in the navigation file, just for effect, and then save in here. So now it's complaining because we don't have a home page URL. Fair enough. I didn't think that one through, did I? Um, but here's the navigation item. So this is what model is. Model. If model's not null and it's got some, then for each item in model, because that's an I enumerable of navigation item itself, there we go. Now it's complaining here because of the home page. So we could just cheat and do like that, uh, which I'm inclined to do. Or instead of having a model, which is just this I enumerable like this, we could create another model. So let's just do that. So in our project, we want to create a folder called models. Uh, now we could do one called view models or whatever, but it's fine. 
So we'll do a new file and we're just going to call this a um, navigation view model. Oops. .cs. And in that we're going to we're going to have a namespace. Whoops, namespace clean dot site dot models and end that namespace. Then we want a public class and this one's called navigation view model. Dot uh, not dot cs what we're we doing. So it's complaining for some reason. Oh it's happy again now. So we want on this we want a uh, home URL, public string home URL, uh, get and set. And then we want public i enumerable or enumerable of i published, oh no, of navigation item. And just call this navigation items get set. Yeah, Visual Studio formats things a lot easier. But I'm just doing it anyway. Give you a chance to catch up. So control dot on there. So now we've got a home URL and we've got the navigation items and they're on our navigation view model. So, whoops. What we can do is we can go into our view component and at this point here, we can do uh, var model equals new like that and then we can do an initializer like this and we can tell it what we want it to do now it doesn't know what navigation view model is so we have to control dot on it to get that if you're not getting all these intellisense and things just make sure you've got the c sharp extension installed so it's that one c sharp by microsoft uh, so there's two properties here. So we've got the home URL equals homepage.url. Uh, and then it's comma there. And then we'll do navigation items equals navigation items. There we are. And then in here, instead of passing navigation items through, we can just do model. So now what we can do is copy that oh I keep doing control shift s then we can go to our partial view again that is confusing I can see why people do like name it something but instead of I enumerable of navigation item we can just say model is navigation view model we just need to make sure that we've got the using at using clean.site.models and it will be happy and then where we had this href there we can just do at model.homeurl and then where we've got this model.any we can just put in here no model.navigation items uh, model.navigation items and then model.navigation items oh I keep doing it Right, so that should now render the navigation. So it should work as it was doing before, but we've moved it out to a view component. Um, let's give it a whirl. I might, yeah, do you want to restart? Yes, of course I do. So it will rebuild all that, and then we'll see it up here starting to uh, rebuild and reload the page. Any minute now. So the nav should be back. It should be all worky worky. Back in business. Yeah, so I think I don't think we need to do the footer. You get the idea. We could probably do that on the next video. Uh, I just don't want to make the videos too long. So what you might find is that I do that separately and just push the code up for that one. Um, so if you want the code, you can get that from the repository here. At the end of every lesson, I update it and I put the tags in. 
and with with a tag you can click on the tag and you can get the source code for that code you can also go back to the code here and you can choose um, tags and you can get the code at the point of these and you can check out you know so if you fought the repository and you want to get back to those tags you can do there's all different ways so yeah let's just go back to main so yeah that it that will link will be in the video description as well so you can get to the code there um if you do like the video um please click on like and subscribe to my channel and if you did want to say thanks by buying me a coffee you can do here by going to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee um it is appreciated when people do but it's not expected at all it's only if you if you can afford it and you want to um, but all of my content's free anyway so don't worry about that uh, but yeah it's just a channel for you if you want to and yeah i'm sorry for a bit of a gap a bit of a break but i've been doing lots of things